Alright, a lot of people are worried about the reliability of the engine in this new Lexus GX 550. It's going to be a twin turbo today. We're going to talk about the top reasons why you should not worry. So stop worrying about how reliable this turbo engine is going to be. Toyota's been doing turbos. Reason number one, Toyota's been doing turbos forever. Turbo. <laughs> They've been doing turbos since the uh, 1980s. So a lot of people think Toyota's new to turbos. This is a Toyota Land Cruiser commercial and they've been putting turbos in them since the 1980s and they've already been known to go forever the last land cruiser land cruiser 200 in the world market actually had a twin turbo v8 not a twin turbo v6 a twin turbo v8 and it has no reported problems people say they last forever so toyota again is not new to this all right, reason number two is Toyota's done this before. In order to understand why the uh, twin turbo V6 in your Lexus GX 550 is going to be so reliable, you got to understand that Toyota already proved everybody wrong in history before with this Lexus LS. The original Lexus LS had a V8 engine in it. It was the first asian as they called it back then v8 they just said it was an asian v8 and they said and i'm talking about the automotive journalists of the time they said there's no way you could they the asians can make a v8 engine work or last long so take yourself back to 1989 or 1988 and v8 engines in american cars that's all they were known to be in in american cars like ford chevy etc they were lucky to last 100,000 miles, but this Lexus LS came along and it was all aluminum on top of that. And people said the same thing uh, about the Lexus LS engine, the V8, as they're saying today about the twin turbo V6 in the Lexus GX550, which is it makes too much power. It makes too much pressure. You can't get a V8 engine to last that long, blah, 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 blah. And Lexus proved everybody wrong. The V8 engine inside this vehicle is what your Lexus GX 460 V8 engine or your Tundra V8 engine that everybody loves. It's all based on this original V8 engine that was in this Lexus LS that they said was impossible. There was no such thing as a V8 engine that lasted forever until Toyota slash Lexus came along and did it. People forget that today, that this was the impossible, you can't do that engine. And so Toyota has already done the impossible before. Which leads into reason number three, which is this right here, Yamaha. It's an open secret that all Toyota engines going back forever are Yamaha designs. Toyota doesn't actually design their own em engines, Yamaha does. Going back to the engines and cars that made the Toyota name, such as the Corolla, those old S-series uh, engines in the Corolla and the Camry, all Yamaha designs. Guess who designed the V8 that we just talked about that lasts forever and proved everybody wrong? Yamaha. So guess who designed the twin turbo V6 in your Lexus GX550? You guessed it. Yamaha. Yamaha <laughs> is not going to let you down. They are simply the best engine manufacturer there is. Toyota doesn't is doesn't make their own stuff toyota is a collection of the world's best automotive parts in other words they choose the best parts and their engines are no exception they're all yamaha designed engines reason number four to stop worrying about the new twin turbos in the uh, gx550 is they're over engineered <laughs> all of these engines are over engineered let's start right here this is the head of the twin turbo v6 going in your lexus gx 550 notice right here that the exhaust manifold is integrated into the exhaust head a lot of people will say well Toyota's done turbos forever, but those have always been turbo diesels, and diesel exhaust uh, gas is cooler than gasoline turbos, and it's the heat in the uh, exhaust stream of a gasoline turbo that kills the turbo, and they would be correct. That is a fair statement, but look. Look here. The head 
encapsulates the exhaust manifold, which means it is water cold. Yay! <laughs> Toyota already thought of that, aka Yamaha already thought of that. This is the exhaust head here, and as you can see, there's an entire water jacket going around the entire exhaust. That means the exhaust gases are water cold. So we're talking a conservative design in this engine. It is way conservative. So the exhaust gases are cold. So what that means to you is a collection of conservative uh, design uh, profiles here that ensure that this turbo engine is going to be very reliable. Here again, we see the head here. Now the head, the exhaust, is in here inside the head and it's water cooled. That means if we follow these arrows here, we notice that this now, this exhaust gas coming out is cooled before it hits the turbine. So people would say, well, the, you can't do, you can't turbo a gasoline car because the exhaust gases are hotter than diesel gases and it's going to overheat the turbo here. They're already cooled. So the exhaust gas itself is cooled before it even hits the turbo, but it gets better. That's just layer number one, because this twin turbo V6 is the only, as far as I can tell, it is one of the only turbocharged engines that have its own dedicated cooling system. So the turbos, which are here and here, have their own cooling circuit, which is here, and its own radiator, which is here. So independent of the main radiator, which is cooling the engine and everything else, the turbo itself, both turbos, have their own dedicated cooling system. That means after you shut the engine off, because the argument is always the heat kills the turbos, which is true, but again, you're going to have this cooling system be able to run after you shut off the engine, which is going to circulate coolant through a radiator and around the turbo charges, and the bearings, etc., and that's going to pull the heat off of it, and you're not going to have to do that silly let the turbo spool down before you shut the engine off nonsense. As far as I know, this is one of the only engines, turbocharged engines today, that have its own dedicated cooling system separate from the main radiator. It's also got its own electric water pump in the system, so it has its own independent water pump, as stated, that can run after you shut the car off. But it gets better than that. The thing is intercooled. But it's intercooled not through an air-to-air -air intercooler, but an air-to-water intercooler, which is seen here, and that cools significantly, <laughs> significantly better than an air-to-air -air intercooler. So your intercoolers, as we see up here, are also on this separated, dedicated, turbo circuit cooling system. So the intercoolers, which are water-cooled, are on their own cooling circuit separate from the rest of the cooling system. It doesn't have a traditional thermostat. It has this ball valve here which sends the uh, coolant everywhere. It is one, two, three, four, five different ways. So it ha it's a very smart system. It's not tapping into the main cooling system like on old cars. It has this old, its whole, whole electronically controlled valve here that will send the coolant this way, that way, wherever it needs to go. And it's all electronically controlled. But it gets even better because you get two, not one. Most cars have one oil squirter per piston. The weakest area in a turbocharged engine is not the block because the block can dissipate the heat on its own. It is the underside of the piston which is made out of aluminum and it's a very thin piece of metal, the top of the piston. So in order to solve this, Toyota puts not one, but as you can see, two squirters per piston. And the next reason, the fifth reason, I'm losing count, someone's always going to say, I don't care what any, it, what, it, not, none of what you said makes any sense. <laughs> Turbochargers are more complicated, and that's just the way it is. They're never going to be as good as a normal, naturally aspirated engine. Blah. Okay, to that I say, turbo, <laughs> turbines have been around forever. This is none other than the Titanic. Yes, that Titanic. 
And the two external or outboard engines on the sides here are normal piston engines. But this big one in the center was a turbine engine. It was a steam-driven turbine. <laughs> Turbos and turbine engines have been around, and turbines have been around <laughs> since the Titanic days. They powered the Titanic central engine here, and they power airplanes, your turboprop engine, your helicopters. They power, power, uh, power plants that generate electricity, and they can be made to last forever. 18-wheelers on the road all have turbos in them, and they last millions of miles. So the idea of this of a turbo being this new technology that can't somehow <laughs> be implemented in modern reality and be made uh, reliable is simply misguided. They're old technology, and as we saw, if you just keep them cool, everything's going to be A-OK. -okay. The fact of the matter is the... Uh, Lexus GX550 twin turbo V6 is an extremely conservative, overly engineered design made and designed by the best engine maker ever, Yamaha. <laughs> On top of that, it's detuned down to a paltry 349 horsepower when the same engine makes something like 420 or something horsepower, excuse me, 409 horsepower in the Lexus LX600. So you can see it's detuned from the Lexus LX600 by something like 60 horsepower. Toyota's playing it super safe and super conservative with this engine. It is diabolically over-engineered, and the core problems with turbocharged and turbocharged engines have been objectively and clearly addressed by Toyota. As stated, the additional oil coolers under the piston and the dedicated uh, cooling system for the turbochargers, along with a water-cooled exhaust stream and a water-cooled intercooler all on its own circuit. These are tremendous, tremendous steps to solving the uh, reliability issues of the turbocharged engine. But can I prove it? Can I prove that the engine will last forever? Nobody can prove it. We have to use logic. And this is the proof or the logic right here. This aluminum V8 engine from the 1989-1990 model years when it what they called it but it came out in 89 <laughs> this old V8 was something everybody said is an impossibility it lasted forever and this is the great great granddaddy of every Toyota and Lexus V8 engine that now people take for granted they take for granted that they can have a Japanese V8 that just lasts forever. This was a complete anomaly, a unicorn pipe dream when it came out, and everybody doubted it. In fact, when these cars came out, you, could, you would see people dump them at 50,000 miles, these Lexus LSs. You would see people dumping these Lexus LSs at 50,000 miles because everybody said that the people that bought these things new said, yeah, it's a great car. I've had no problems with it, but there's no way a V8 engine is going to last past 50, 60, 70,000 miles. So in the, the mid-90s, you could find these things for penny on the dollar with 50, 60, 70,000 miles because people thought a V8 engine, no matter who made it, could not last any longer than 50, 60, 70, 80,000 miles max. But little did they know that they lasted a million miles. <laughs> Lexus, look at this beater down here. <laughs> This was the engine that everybody said, it's not going to last. V8 engines don't last. So I'm babbling about the context of this old Lexus LS engine. This old V8 engine, because this is the granddaddy. I'm, I'm giving it context, because people said the same thing about this car and this engine. 
It's too high strong. It's too complicated. It's never been done before. It's it, V8 engines always have more problems. You're better off getting a four cylinder or V6. They just can't last. It's a it's a uh, you know cheap thrills and then you're done type of engine. Look at it. And now look at this. This is the new version of that old story that I keep telling you. This is the new LS. In fact, this twin turbo V6 that we've been talking about the whole time debuted in 2017. So let's bring it to another point. I know I said I was going to do five points. Let's do point six, which is the V6 twin turbo engine we're talking about debuted on the Lexus LS in 2017. That's over six years ago. <laughs> and it's been reported with no problems. So let's tie it in. The flagship Lexus LS sedan that I just showed you, this beater here, this was Lexus Pride and Joy. Remember, this is the car that made Lexus with the You Can't Do It V8 engine. Now, the 2020, well, the 2017, so when the, the, the Lexus uh, uh, new model debuted in 2017 for the LS, their flagship sedan, got the engine that we're talking about, and it has, has had no reported problems. What that means is Lexus is proud of this twin turbo V6. So proud that they dared put it in their flagship Lexus LS, upon which their whole entire reputation is based upon. Are they going to screw it up? Highly unlikely. Can I prove it? Nobody can, but highly improbable. So worry not about your new Lexus GX550 seen here with this beautiful Yamaha-designed twin-turbo V6 with insane, one-of-a-kind controls, redundant, over-engineered controls to cool it, and its turbos that we talked about. <laughs> I know. By the way, if you're still here for some reason, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you very much. But if you're still here... Remember, this is Lexus's pride and joy. It's conservative. It's been done before. They've been doing turbos forever. And everything that everybody says turbos can't do that's because it has this problem. It has a problem with dissipating. It has a problem with this. Blah, 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 blah. Toyota, Lexus, Yamaha has already addressed that. And we've objectively seen that. And where else are you going to find a turbocharged engine that has its own cooling system? This diagram looks crazy, but it's not hard. This is the electric oil uh, water pump. So in your twin turbo V6, this is an electric, dedicated electric water pump. It's going to pump the water up down here. Then it goes to your intercoolers. And here's your two turbochargers. And then it's going to come back down here. And where does it go? It goes down here. <laughs> Look at this. It goes down here to the uh, intercooler radiator, which is here. And then it can also split off here to a sub radiator. <laughs> How many radiators besides the main radiator <laughs> did they put in this engine? It's ridiculous. You have an intercooler reserve tank. So this whole separate uh, turbocharger intercooler radiator system also has its own overflow tank <laughs> slash reserve tank before it comes back over here to the normal electric pump all right lastly the proof at least the best we can get for proof is in the anecdote so please this engine this is the frame of the lexus gx uh, 550 with the twin turbo v6 this engine this setup is in the lexus ls it's been around since 2017 Look online for anecdotes around the world, not just the United States, of anybody with reported problems. No reported problems. This has been in the Land Cruiser 300 for about three years now in the world market. Okay? No reported problems. But the new Tundras had problems. Their waste gates had issues. And they, the, the, the Tundras with this engine, they had all problems and they all blew up, blah, blah, blah. No, nope, that was only a manufacturing issue at the assembly line at the assembly plant in america and it was isolated to only one assembly line at one plant 
and it got blown out of proportion. It wasn't a problem with the turbos. This is the turbo wastegate actuator here. They probably messed up something on the, you know, with the wiring and the wastegate wouldn't actuate. And still, it went into safe mode. It did not damage the engine. And the problem, most importantly, has been corrected. There's been zero Tundra wastegate or turbo issues reported at all uh, since those initial reports came out. So fear not your engine and your new Lexus L or excuse me, GX550. Go out, get it, and drive the thing like you stole it. <laughs> Toyota engines are not petting zoos, and Yamaha engines are not petting zoos. <laughs> they're conservatively designed, and they're made to be thrashed on. Please do yourself a favor. If you get one of these vehicles, go out and enjoy it. The reason why you're paying more for a Toyota or a Lexus is so you don't have to worry about any of the stuff that people are already worrying about. Toyota is world known for reliability, durability, and quality. They're not going to sacrifice that reputation on their flagship multi-billion dollar global corporation. They'd have nothing to gain from that at all. So please, drive it like you stole it, and don't worry. Enjoy your vehicle, have fun with it, thrash it. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you, and have a great, great day.